All right, good morning, Bree. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Oregon Zoo's Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Bree, and I'm part of the Ambassador Animal Staff here at the Oregon Zoo, and today we are hanging out with Josie the Sloth. We'd like to thank you all for joining us today and for all your support in this uh, very different time for us. Uh, there is a link uh, in this post if you would like to participate in some of the at-home sloth activities afterwards. And there is that donate button. If you are able, we really appreciate your support during this time. But we're gonna jump right in. All of our animals and the staff here are healthy, but we're gonna keep wearing these masks as an extra precaution to make sure we stay that way. So this is Josie. She is a Linnaeus two-toed sloth. And she's been here at the Oregon Zoo for about four years. So Alexi's asking, uh, does Josie like to stay upside down all the time? Alexi, she does spend most of her time upside down. Sloths really are built to spend their lives that way. The only exception is really about once a week when a sloth will make its way down to the base of whatever tree it's at, and it will go to the bathroom about once a week at that time, turning itself right side up. Then it heads straight back up into that tree and turns upside down again. Addison's asking, how fast can Josie move? Addison, good question. So, uh, sloths are known for being really slow, but they're conserving that energy. So if they need to use it to stay safe from predators, they have the energy to do so. But most of the time, she, she cruises around pretty slowly. Braylon is asking, how old is Josie and how long do the sloths live for? Uh, Braylon, that is um, a good question too. You know, Josie is actually um, somewhere around 15 years old at this point, but Josie was actually born out in the rainforests of Northern South America. And so she came to us after being in private ownership. So we don't actually know exactly how old she is. So Jace is asking, why does she go so slow? Jace, that's all because Josie's food out in the rainforest would be things like leaves and shoots and bark, things that don't have lots of energy packed into them. And so slowing down like that helps her to conserve all that energy. So Rory and Hazel are both asking, what are some of Josie's favorite snacks? Well, right now Josie is getting some of her favorite foods and that is an apple there and she also loves yam. How crunchy is Josie when she's crunching her snacks? <laughs> Josie is a very loud chewer. She does like to crunch on especially that yam really well. It helps keep those, her teeth nice and clean though, even though it doesn't look it, her teeth are actually in great shape. So Grayson is asking, um, and so for the folks who might have missed this before, where um, does this species live? So sloths are found in their native range in Central and South America in rainforest habitats. But Linnaeus two-toed sloths like Josie are found in the rainforests of Northern South America. He, Grayson had another question. Uh, is Josie's fur soft? Grayson is actually pretty coarse. It's a really coarse hair. And in fact, it is sometimes home if she is out in the rainforest to lots of different algae and even a different species of moth that will actually make their home in that coarse fur um, and help keep her nice and camouflaged from predators. Tabitha is asking, what do sloths do at night? Tabitha, they are nocturnal. So they are designed to be awake at night. Unlike us, uh, in the wild, they are going to be cruising around that rainforest canopy, foraging or looking for their food with an excellent sense of smell. Bobby's wanting to know, what are those long claws used for? So sloths have, Bobby, they have really, really long claws. And as you can see, that's primarily what she's using to hang on to this branch here. So keeping those nails nice and healthy and strong is really important for her. So we have a, a number of people asking when, they, when it's safe to come back to the zoo, how can people seize Josie? Uh, Josie is an ambassador animal. And so she lives with our ambassador animal crew. Uh, the best way to see Josie because she doesn't live on exhibit is to come see her behind the scenes. We offer wild connections programs. Keep an eye out for those when we start to open back up again um, that do include behind the scenes opportunities to meet many of the different animals here at the zoo. And that includes Josie. 
So Josie is a two-toed sloth. Camila is asking, what are some of the other types of sloth? So Camila, there are two-toed sloths and three-toed sloths, and that is all determined by the number of toes on their front feet. Everyone has three on the back, but Josie has two on the front. There are six species of sloth in total, four three-toed and two two-toed. Uh, Amelia and Aaron are asking, how many babies do sloths have? Uh, Amelia, Aaron, they only have one baby at a time. Babies are really tough to raise, and of course they take lots of energy, and sloths are always trying to conserve, it, conserve that. So having one baby at a time helps them do that. They're going to cling onto mom's belly for the first couple months of their lives. That's actually the only other time, other than going to the bathroom, that they're right side up. Carolyn's asking, how small are the babies when they're born? They're pretty small. You can imagine they would cling to um, mom's stomach pretty easy, Carolyn. So they have to be pretty small when they're first born, but they, they grow pretty quickly. So we had a I missed the name, but the question was, are sloths considered primates? Can you tell us a little bit about what family of mammals sloths are in? Yeah, absolutely. So sloths are mammals, of course, um, but they are most closely related actually to armadillos and anteaters. So kind of a different um, family there. Uh, as opposed to primates like us. Benjamin's asking, how do sloths defend themselves against predators? And what, what are some sloth predators? Benjamin, so predators for sloths are often things like uh, large snakes, jungle eagles, or jaguars. And the best way that a sloth can protect itself out in those situations is to stay nice and hidden. That camouflage is really important. So having algae in their fur that's growing in there, or even those moths, actually turns them kind of a green color, and that can help them to stay safe in the wild. So uh, Patty asked, some, uh, asked a follow-up to something you mentioned before. Why do some sloths have moths uh, living on their fur? <laughs> well, it's a great ecosystem, Patty, for um, that moth. Because that algae is growing in there, everybody benefits from that situation. So of course, that is a symbiotic relationship between those different animals. It's a great way to, to um, ever have everyone benefit in that situation. Hazel's asking if so sloths can swim. Hazel, some species of sloths are known for occasionally swimming when they need to get from one grove of trees to another. But Josie obviously doesn't do much swimming here at the zoo. That's not something she needs to do here. Um, and really it's um, designed for them to get from place to place. It's not something they do for enjoyment. So uh, we had some folks asking if uh, Josie will have babies. Oh, that's a great question, everyone. Um, so Josie um, could potentially um, go into uh, having the opportunity to breed eventually because she was born out in the rainforest in the wild. Her genetics are totally different than a sloth, any other Linnaeus sloth that we have in zoos in North America. So that would really help us in keeping our zoo populations healthy. But that depends on us finding a great genetic match for her. So we all work together, AZA accredited zoos across the country, to make sure that we can find uh, suitable matches for them through something called an SSP program. Geneva is asking, how much does, do sloths sleep? How much time does Josie spend just snoozing? Geneva, she will spend somewhere around 16 to 18 hours a day snoozing. She does wake up for us periodically throughout the day so that we can work with her, but most of the time throughout the day she's napping. And then once we're gone for the day, she often um, comes out, cruises around, and she'll spend most of the evening awake. So Callie has an important question. Uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, how cute is Josie? Oh, that's an 11 easy for sure. <laughs> with the crunchiness sounds that you get to hear and that adorable nose, how could you not fall in love with Josie? So Bree, what's it like to work with, uh, to, with Josie and to care for her here at the zoo? It's pretty incredible. Um, I love working with all of the animals that we are fortunate enough to have here um, as ambassadors. We're really um, proud of all of the things that we get to do. And we spend a lot of time caring for them. Josie does have really specific needs for her care. Living in a rainforest, she has to have very specific temperature and humidity, specific foods to keep her nice and healthy, and really specific veterinary care. So all of those elements are really important to make sure Josie's getting the care she needs. So Rory and a couple of other folks asked, um, 
Uh, why didn't Josie stay in the rainforest? How did she come to live at the Oregon Zoo? Yeah, Rory, so um, Josie was actually born out in the rainforest and she was illegally captured and brought into the exotic pet trade. So she was adopted by somebody here in the Portland metro area that uh, was told that she was an orphan and needed to be rescued. So they thought they were doing a really great thing by giving Josie a place to go. But really quickly, they realized that Josie has those really specific uh, care needs and they couldn't provide those for her. So they contacted us here at the Oregon Zoo and we were really fortunate to be able to take her at that time and provide her that care. So Brie, can you tell us why, why sloths don't really make good pets? Well, all those reasons that I mentioned before, um, absolutely. So all of those really specific care needs, your average veterinarian that you take a dog or cat to is not going to know how to care for a sloth. Um, they have really specific diets and um, really specific care needs. And of course, that temperature, that humidity to make sure those fur and those nails stay really healthy is incredibly important for them. Not something that's very easy to produce in your own home. They require a lot of attention and a lot of time and knowledge. So we have a lot of sloth fans out there that know now that sloths are not good pets, but they want to do something to help sloths. How can people help sloths that are living in the wild? That is an excellent question. There are a lot of different ways that you can help sloths. Um, one thing to do is make sure that you never own a sloth as a pet. Oh, she's going to drop that one. That's all right. We have plenty more for her here. Um, another great way to protect all species that live in the rainforest, including sloths like Josie, is to make sure that the products that we buy that come from rainforest land are things like uh, bird friendly or shade grown coffee. Um, making sure that those products, if you're a big fan of chocolate or a big fan of coffee, um, are coming from sustainably sourced areas. If you are a meat eater, maybe take a step back and Take a meat-free Monday, that's okay too. A lot of our beef comes from rainforest land because it is so fertile, it's better, it's easy to uh, ranch cattle on. And so making sure that our beef is coming from local sources, we're supporting local ranchers. If we choose to eat meat, it's a great way to do that as well. Jennifer's asking uh, if sloths ever go down to the ground. In what situation would a sloth leave the, the treetops and go down to the ground? Jennifer, about the only time that sloths are going to come down to the ground is if they need to get to a different grove of trees or that once a week where they actually come down to the bottom of the trees, turn themselves right side up and go to the bathroom. That's about the only time that sloths are going to spend on the ground. So Elsie's asking, with spending all this time upside down, is it hard for them to swallow? Can you, can you tell us a little bit about the adaptations that allow a sloth to spend its whole life pretty much hanging? Absolutely. So those nails are really important for her. That's how she's going to hang on in that position for a long time. Um, she's actually not using much muscle to do that. It's really primarily those nails that are helping her. And as far as food goes, not only does Josie have a really ridged roof of her mouth that is helping her food stay in the middle of her mouth, she also has a really sticky tongue. All that saliva in there is very sticky. That helps her to keep everything in place. You also notice that when Josie actually swallows, often she is coming back and forth in this position, so she's not having to fight gravity quite so much, and she's not spending all of her time hanging directly upside down. Uh, Sandra's asking, how much does Josie weigh? Uh, Sandra, she weighs about 16 pounds. That's about how much, uh, it's pretty average for a, a sloth like her. Karen wants to know, what does Josie smell like? <laughs> Uh, Karen Josie definitely does have a, a fragrance to her. Um, it is a little bit musty, um, so if I didn't get a chance to shower this morning, I can always blame it on Josie. <laughs> Melissa wants to know if Josie makes any sounds besides these adorable crunching sounds, any vocalizations. Uh, Melissa, Josie herself does not make too many sounds. They can make some calls when they're trying to locate a mate. Um, that have to carry pretty far in that rainforest canopy. But Josie doesn't make too many sounds here. Sometimes she will um, kind of do a loud sigh more than anything, but not too many vocalizations from her. Brielle and Samuel are asking, does Josie like to play? Uh, Brielle, Samuel, you know, Josie likes to interact with her habitat and her space a lot. 
um, when we're not there, right? When it's nighttime and our staff isn't here. So we spend a lot of time setting up maybe her food or different um, enrichment items in her space that she can interact with while we're gone. So she's gonna use that nose, that really great sense of smell, a lot to interact with those different things in that space. Um, for the folks who might have missed it before, what, they're asking what sort of enrichment does Josie get or how do we help her out with the enrichment? So with enrichment, we try and give her lots of what we call brows, which basically means uh, trimmings or clippings from uh, plants that she might want to chew on, that um, she can sniff around or lick and get some moisture off of, because that's really natural for sloths. So a lot of the things that we give her are um, trying to imitate the ways that she would interact with her environment in, in the rainforest as well. So things that she would want to climb to and explore with that great sense of smell or maybe rub up against and scratch that fur. And so for the folks who uh, might have missed it before are asking how, uh, we have a number of people asking, how old is Josie? Uh, so we don't know exactly how old Josie is because she came to us as an adult and she was born out in the rainforests of Northern South America. Um, but we estimate based on her body um, development that she is around 15 years old at this point. And we'll take one last question it's from Reva. Uh, does Josie like hanging out with you? Reva, she definitely seems engaged by the time that she spends with us and with our guests here. She loves to get her snacks and she definitely likes to come explore close to different objects using that great sense of smell. So she seems really ready all the time to wake up and interact with us. But anytime she does that is her choice. At any point she can decide that she's done and she'd like to, to move away and we're okay with that. Everything for her gets to be her choice. That's really important to us. Well, Bree, thank you so much for hanging out with us and Josie today. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure that you follow this post so that you can do those at-home activities and post them in the comments later. Use that Oregon Zoo hashtag to let us know that you're out there. And if you can, please donate uh, to us with that donate button. We really appreciate all your support. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Bree. Bye, Josie.